good morning. Uh, today, very happy to welcome actress and filmmaker Susie Singer Carter, talking to us from the United States. Hello, uh, Susie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you very much for accepting the live. Pleasure to meet you online. Nice to meet you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you very much. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get started as an actress and a filmmaker? Hmm, that's a big story. Well, um, I went to, I started off as a writer, writing for journalism and at UCLA. And uh, I, I quickly realized that I didn't like the to be in that world. It, it felt a little bit um, depressive and, and uh, and didn't align with 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 my energy with the way I was at that age, um, and I, I married I married an actor very young, and uh, I was at first adverse to that, and then realized that I I actually really enjoyed storytelling, whether I was in front of the camera or behind the camera, and so I began, you know, acting, and then and as I the business of acting is 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 not always uh, wonderful. So I decided, and I really felt like my my talents would be better served writing and producing, and and I found that I really was in love with making stories and and moving people, whether they're whether they're being entertained by, you know, learning something new or or having an epiphany or being entertained, may, get, getting to laugh about something. That normally isn't funny and that to me is is so exciting so that's pretty much my transition emotionally into the field of writing and and producing and directing great um i want to thank you you sent me yesterday information about your documentary no country for the old people mm -hmm. and uh, i want you to share with our listeners and viewers what inspired you to create this documentary and uh, how the documentary was received and how uh, from your point of view and also the point of view of viewers how did it shed the light on the issues at the nursing home system in the united states right so thank you for asking um uh, to be honest we are in the middle of producing it right now and and the way that it became the way that it, it came into my my purview was was on personal experience. And last year, at this time, this very time, I was going through the horrible nursing home system that I was I had no idea was that broken. And I was trying to advocate and protect my mother who had Alzheimer's and was um, being bounced around within this system, which is really designed to make. Uh, People put profit over people. It's a very lucrative business. And um, the, the, the business of aging is very, very lucrative. But nobody knows that. I didn't know that until I got, I got really in the weeds in, in, um, and saw how powerless I was to protect my mother. And the, the egregious kind of uh, treatment on our on our loved ones and our elders and our most vulnerable is is daunting and and truly unbelievable and when i was telling people when i was in it what was going on i really i could feel their skepticism and their doubt that am i is she really talking about this wonderful place like my mom was at a five star facility that was very had a fantastic reputation and, you know, and the truth is, is that what I found deeper as I got more into this, this, this idea of doing a documentary that, you know, it, it really falls down to the problem of ageism and, and that, and that ageism, that, that idea of individualism has really permeated not only United States, but mo almost all countries. There's very few, there's very few locations that really still revere the elder and, and keep them, you know, in, involved in community and respect the, the experience and, you know, it, the values and the dignity and, and the respect that, that they deserve. So it's, it's sadly 
it's sadly becoming pervasive. So I started, I started um, producing this with my partner, uh, Rick Montcastle, who is a retired attorney general, who was the topic of the miniseries from um, Dope, the Dope Sick miniseries on Hulu, which really portrayed him when he was going after Purdue Pharma for the uh, off-marketing of Depakote and the whole opiate crisis. And this was a mini series. And I have a podcast called Love Conquers Alls. And I invited him to be on my show because the very last episode discussed his next uh, case, which was against Abbott Labs for off-marketing a drug called Depakote to nursing homes to chemically restrain their residents. And my mother was a victim of Depakote and it's, and it's quite, it's quite, a, a it's an, it's a drug that should not be given to older people. It's a drug that is meant for epilepsy to control epilepsy for people with dementia. It can cause all kinds of problems, including death. And my mom became immobile and continent for the rest of her life, the last eight years of her life because of the drug that I had no idea she was on until, until I did. So, uh, Rick, who also investigated uh, nursing home fraud for and abuse for over 25 years, he was the first one who, to enlighten me and tell me that I was up against a systemic issue and that as, as many places and people that he prosecuted within this, this issue, there has been no change. This, this, these issues, these horrible issues have been around for decades. And he really saw no, no light until we together, when he was thinking of me as a filmmaker, he thought, we both thought maybe, maybe there's power. Well, I know there's power in storytelling. And, and I think that he saw it through some of the, the visuals that I was shared with him. And thus the idea of no country for old people was born. And it's really, it's really taken off. And I have, the most amazing experts who've been advocating for decades, really, really being honest and, and laying out what's really going on so the public can, can really understand and pay attention. And, and hopefully this, this documentary will elicit a very emotional response, which is what we need. And that would be, and then that would lead to a movement and that would lead to real change. Cause right now, there's no incentive to change the model from the top. Yes. I don't know, Susie, if you noticed last month there was um, some demonstration uh, in France uh, when the French uh, president wanted to, um, uh, to change the age of retirement in France. Uh, and so the reason for that, he... Uh, he wanted to diminish the pension given to people when they retire in Europe. And uh, of course, you know, even you, if you are an actress, maybe you can work hours and hours. I mean, in the creative uh, environment, uh, you can work more than nine to five every day, not li like uh, an official at an office or at a facility. And then uh, when you sacrifice, your life for an entity and then you would like to 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 retire to uh, and to give some time to you or to your family because i imagine when someone retire his sons and daughters already they they have their own lives uh, you know what, what i wanted to say um, uh, i mean do you think that uh, right now the mindset of governments is uh, to to get rid of all old people, you know, and not to care for them, they only get from them their youth, years, and energy, and then they end up with nothing. They they want they don't want uh, they want they don't want them to live after they uh, they retire. Do you think that's what's happening right now? Not only in America. I think I think that's a, a very. Um it's a very insightful, and I, I mean, you know, it, it incites a lot of emotions to think that way. And, and in some respects, I think that that might be true. 
and because if they because our our elder community can look like a burden and and a, a financial burden it can look you know like a a, a resource burden and um and then on the flip side there is there is the the po the potential and and this is what the issue the issue is here in America and it's and it's not happening just here it's happening in the UK and in Canada and in New Zealand and Australia and 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 in Spain a, a lot of places where you know they our elders are being warehoused really and because there's no there's not a lot of oversight and and because people because of the ageism people aren't looking people aren't caring so these these it's likened to organized crime i mean people are making billions of dollars off of aged people and and by warehousing them because when you have when you have our you know when you have things like social security and and cms you know medicare and medicaid paying for these elders to be cared for and the money isn't going to them it's 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 being redirected it's being extracted and given to these owners of of nursing homes and the business model is set up to siphon money you know to related parties and to you know and to ultimately the owners these that have, have privatized this industry and it really is an industry so yes are they trying to take the burden out off this off society yeah when the when their potential for making money for these people is exhausted does that make sense yes i want to, to ask you then about the artistic side of such project of yours is it easy to find financing to produce the project i need i mean you at least you have uh, a research budget and then you'll have cameras lighting uh, crew post-production and then maybe marketing and is it easy to find financing for such a pro uh, project you know at your end oh my gosh that's such a great question it you know, it, and it align it aligns so well with the with the issue of of ageism and ableism, especially with people that you know have dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, it's a it's a it's a lethal combination ageism and and the and ableism. Um, so yes, it is so difficult to raise money for this topic, and and I I am shocked at how hard it has been. Um, we are. We're, we're pretty much finished with all of the research, all of the, the, the interviews. Now we're ready to move into the editing, which is really where all of it happens. And it is really the longest process. And I'm still raise, fundraising for that. And it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking that I will, I will talk to, you know, very wealthy philanthropists. And when you bring up the idea of, a documentary that that is going to feature the quality of lives of older people there is a big resistance and i you know i can only i can only i can only say that i can attribute that to ageism and the fact that people just don't care they don't want to or they don't want to look at it because it's too hard of a topic to look at nobody wants to, th to think about getting old no one wants to think about dying but the truth is is that that's all that's where we are all headed and why not make it a better transition why not have that chapter be lovely as it can be why wouldn't we and but you know and and until you experience this and see how horrible it is you 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 won't know you can't know but yeah it's very it's been very difficult to raise the money i i have we have succeeded to get this far but it's not enough it's not enough do you, do you think you will face such difficulty in distribution and sales of the film once finished i don't i think once <laughs> because i'm very confident in my in my my filmmaking, um, I know just from the sizzles and the trailers that my 
my team and I have put out so far, they're very evocative. They are the, the emotion when, after I've shown them, it, you know, we just, I just shared it at a unity panel with the, the great Panthers of New York city. And after we showed the, this 13 minute sizzle, the emotion was palpable. I mean, you could feel it. And that was on zoom. You could feel, you could feel the heartache. And so I know that once, once I once this is ready to be distributed, I I have no doubt that this will be picked up. So there is no doubt in my mind. Yeah, because I'm true. This is I'm looking at this as this is not an expose. This is a story. This is a movie. This is a story. It's a love story about my mom and all the other people like my mom, because even though it's her story, it's 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 your story. It's my story. It's everybody's story. So it's yes. going to resonate. Yes. Um, uh, I want to ask you, um, um, uh, 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 tell us a little bit about your your, your work with Alzheimer uh, Los Angeles, your campaigns, and also your uh, caregiving uh, advocacy. What can you tell us about it? At, um, and if you like as well to invite other people to join your efforts as well, uh, um, it will be great through this uh, interview. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Well, I, I got into the advocacy and, and, and in terms of caregivers and Alzheimer's um, when my mom was diagnosed. Six, she passed away last year, 16 years before that she was diagnosed. And then in 2017, I did a short film called My Mom and the Girl based on my uh, day in the life of the year that my mother lived with me. And that movie starred uh, an iconic, uh, she was a, she is America's sweetheart, uh, Valerie Harper, who portrayed my mother. And she it was her last performance before she passed away. And it was a brilliant performance. We were, the, the short film was Oscar qualified. We went to Cannes, we won many 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 awards we won a pbs fine cuts award we are we have just dis, we've been distributed distributed everywhere it continues to touch so many people you know five years later and um and that's because again it's done with it's done with heart and humor and real real life i mean i didn't sugarcoat it but i also wanted to show the positive sides and re redefine how to look at something like Alzheimer's because it's such a misunderstood disease. And so I, I, I really wanted to show how to lean into it and all the mistakes that I made because I made a lot of mistakes like we all do when we first become a caregiver. And, and after that, uh, when that movie was being, was being shown on the festival circuit and I became involved with Los, uh, Alzheimer's Los Angeles I also became very involved with Us Against Alzheimer's in Washington, D.C., who became our fiscal sponsor. Um, and I, I, I just threw myself into the community and I did a lot of promotion for them. And I, I was the face on, a, on many, um, like, uh, what do you call it, public, public service announcements. And, and I, my face was on a lot of <laughs> hanging on on the street lamps all over Los Angeles and and I only say that because I was so happy to be able to bring attention to to this issue and and um, so and last year at the end of last year I, I emceed the lost the Alzheimer's Association walk for Alzheimer's and that was such an honor. Um, so I, I continue to advocate in that area and yes, I invite everybody to advocate and, and try to change the stigma because there is ableism and there's so much stigma against people that have dementia because there's such a misunderstanding. And, um, and that's how from that, from that film, I had, I wanted to continue this incredible conversation and, and I did so by starting the podcast Love Conquers Alls. And we're in our sixth season and I've, I've had the most incredible interviews and uh, interviewees and experts and, and caregivers and stories that'll touch your heart and stories that will rock your world because you, there's information that you haven't heard before. 
Um, so it is my, it is my mission. It is my mission. I don't think there's a better one for me to use my, my, my skill as a storyteller to, to make, to shift, to shift the paradigm. Um, I, I hope, uh, Susie, uh, uh, you finish the film soon and, uh, I hope we can attend, attend this premiere, maybe next year, something yes. like that. But uh, finally, I would like to ask you if you have other projects or other dreams you would like to realize as an entertainer as well. What can you tell us? Yes, I do. I have a film that I, I wrote a film called Run based on, I was hired to write, uh, adapt from a book called Plain Jane. It is a dramedy. It's a, it's uh, the the story. It's a, it's a story of friendship of two women, and it it also it also plays into the idea of um, IVF, which is you know in infertility, and and it's just really a beautiful, funny, uplifting story that is very very relatable, especially in in this this generation of of young families there's so much there's so much infertility at, for some reason right now and people because of the lifestyle are are freezing eggs and and there's all there's all kinds of uh kind of issues about uh who owns those eggs what happens to those eggs are they people are what you know all these big 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 questions so i'm very really excited about this project I, i'm attached to direct we have uh, Leighton Meester um, attached from Gossip Girl and we have Rose McIver from this incredibly popular show Ghost and um, The Lovely Bones was her first film and I'm extremely excited we're gonna we we will realize this in in I believe 2024 because COVID pushed us back a little bit but that's my next project it. Uh, Susie, I want to thank you very much for coming to our show today. I wish you all the best in finalizing your uh, documentary and also uh, realizing your dream as a filmmaker and a writer. Uh, and uh, I wish you all the best in contacting people to appear in your documentary as interviewee or a co-producer or co-financiers. And I look forward to uh, we have an interview after I, I can watch the, the film and discuss it with you profoundly. I'd love that. And please share if you can with your network, you know, please. Sure to donate it's tax deductible 100 percent we're working with the, na the consumer, consumer voice the national consumer voice for quality long-term care and everything is deductible and we would appreciate the support because people are suffering as we're talking now yes understandable again thank you very much wish you all thank the you. best i, I look you. forward for our next uh, interview Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Take care. Okay. Have a good day. Take care. You too. Bye bye.